Developing real estate is one of the most, if not the most profitable strategy there is as an investor. It also carries with it the highest risk, but you can mitigate that risk by doing your research and knowing exactly how to choose a market to develop in. In this video, I'll share how to analyze a market for real estate development by asking these five key questions. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a tool that will help you decide which real estate market will best suit you. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help create a thousand millionaires using real estate State investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. There are many different kinds of developments that you could take on. There's industrial, commercial, retail, or residential to name a few. But no matter what type of development you are considering, you first have to analyze the market before you jump in. For the sake of this video, I'm going to talk about developing residential real estate. I'll assume that you've narrowed in on a few markets that you're considering as a first step. If you haven't, I would suggest doing some overall market analysis and look at factors such as the local economy, the jobs market, affordability, and average income. But when we look specifically at development for the purpose of renting or selling residential units, there's a different set of factors that we want to consider. Here are the five questions you need answered before deciding if you want to develop in a market. Question number one, is there a need? It's important that you look at the economics of a market first. This can be broken down into two simple categories, supply and demand. Is there demand in the area and is there adequate supply to fill that demand? If there's a lack of supply and a high demand, then the market will be poised for growth. Some factors that you want to consider when looking at the supply side or the vacancy rate in that municipality and how many new homes or units are being brought to the market each year. The months of inventory or saturation rate will tell you how long the property sits on the market before it's scooped up. All of these factors will tell you if there is a supply or demand imbalance. Question number two, is the municipality development friendly? You would think that all municipalities would encourage new development, seen as how we're in the middle of a housing crisis here in North America, but that's definitely not the case. Some municipalities will have councillors or mayors that have been elected by the constituents because they're in opposition to new developments. NIMBYism, as it's called, is a real thing. And for those who aren't familiar with what NIMBYism stands for, it means not in my backyard. To find out if an area is friendly to developers, look at these factors. What are the development charges in that municipality? And for those of you not familiar with what development charges are, they are the cost the municipality charges to bring a new unit to the market. Those development charges offset new infrastructure, such as water and sewer lines, new roads and parks and city services. If you find a municipality is willing to waive or defer development charges, for instance, that is a great indicator that they are development friendly. Other factors you should be looking out for, what are the approximate timelines to get a development through the planning process? And are there any incentives the municipality is offering to encourage development? If a municipality doesn't have these things, it doesn't mean they aren't in favor of new development. It just means that it could take longer and cost more to develop there. Question number three, is the municipality looking to add density and if so, where are they looking to add that density? You can find this information in the official plan. Every municipality has one and you can get access to it. This is essentially a time machine for developers. This will tell you where the municipality wants to create more density, add new neighborhoods, or change the zoning to facilitate the municipality's future vision. Get a hold of an official plan, study it, and find areas where the municipality wants to increase density and start looking at those areas as potential spots to acquire real estate. A word of caution, just because there are plans to change zoning or increase density doesn't mean that this is a sure thing. Do your due diligence before making any purchases based on the official plan. Plan. Question number four, who will your end customer be? It's best to start with an avatar of what your ideal customer will look like. See how much they make, what are their habits and hobbies, and what kind of housing are they looking for? This will inform all of your decisions, such as whether you want to build an apartment building, single family homes, or a mobile home park. After you've decided on what kind of building you want to build, the next step is to understand what size units you want to create. Does your avatar want a micro suite with some shared common areas, or are they looking for four bedrooms and four bathrooms because they have a large large family. Once you figure out what kind of building and the size of your units, now you need to focus on what kind of finishes you'll use. Will this development be a luxury development? Will it have standard finishes? Or will this be something designed for affordability? And question number five when analyzing a market for real estate development is how much will it cost to build and what can you rent or sell these units for? You can have great demand and low supply, but there could potentially be a reason for that. If the cost to build in an area is prohibitive, this could be why there's a lack of housing. If 
builders have a hard time getting local trades or it's difficult to get materials to a certain area, that will increase the cost. So when you're analyzing a market, you not only have to look at what someone is willing to pay, but also what it's going to cost to complete. At a high level, when you're analyzing a market, you should understand the hard costs of a development, which are the material and labor costs of the project, the soft costs, which are architects, engineers, consultants, and any city fees like permits or development charges, and your carrying costs, which is the cost of financing the project. Once the units are complete, what can you sell them or rent them for? You should know the cost per square foot or cost per square meter of new units being sold and also the cost per square foot on rentals as well. Knowing all of this information will give you a much better understanding of whether the market is feasible or not. As promised, I wanted to share a tip with you that will help you make all of this a little bit easier for you to track. Create a spreadsheet and a scoring system for each one of these categories. How many points you want to assign to any given item, that's up to you. I would start with five to 10 markets and then narrow that down to two to three based on your scorecard. The winners will become very clear if you're doing this properly. And the nice thing about a scorecard is it gives you the data and the numbers you can rely on and takes the emotions out of it. As an investor, we have to rely on the numbers because the numbers never lie. This way we make decisions based on fundamentals and not on our feelings. If you're looking for a guided approach to development, I have a course that will show you the step-by-step -step process of how to take a development project from conception to completion. Check out all the information on my website at darrenvoros.com. If you've got questions around how to analyze a market for real estate development or anything else real estate investing related, leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.